Hey guys, Mitty here. The farther we go, the more interesting content we get for that great game, Black Desert Mobile, to enjoy it even more and boost our character's CP. One thing I love Black Desert Mobile for is because here you have no limit on what character to play. It's very easy to reroll to another class, or if you are okay with your main, you can still enjoy other classes and boost them with the resources that you have. We already have passive content for our alts, Tower of Trios. It's not that entertaining as you just send your alts there and done. Even though you get a lot of juicy rewards, there is nothing to do. But all will change in the next update, as we will receive Path of Glory and another reason to empower our alts and family CP. In that video I will give you all the basic information that you need to understand what is Path of Glory about, what it gives, why it's important and how to play it. And in next one I will go deeper into explaining some crucial mechanics, like what alts to bring, how to equip them, what skill builds to use, how and when to use buffs and what to do overall to succeed defending your castle with lowest stress and best performance. So make sure to stay tuned for the second video, as it will leave you prepared for the challenge. And believe me, succeeding in Path of Glory is indeed a great challenge that gives great rewards. And without further ado, let's begin the POG review. First, what do you need? In order to enter POG, you will need 5 alts. They can be even pre-awakened, but I highly recommend you to ascend or awaken each and every alt that you will put in there. As unlike Tower that needs only CP, Path of Glory needs also power. Not only that, make sure to learn all the skills for your alts, if you really want to succeed the 10 waves of that content. Just like in Tower of Trials, your alts will also need high CP in order to make it through. I suggest you empower them evenly, as this will allow you to grow faster the family CP and the power for the dungeon itself. Also note that not only CP is important, but the substats too, so don't underestimate attack speed, critical chance and branches. This will also boost your alt killing potential. What class combination to choose and what skill builds to use will be shown in the next video. How to enter In order to enter the dungeon, a new button will appear in the menu. Here we see a lot of different options to click, but it's all easy. On the left side we see character selection menu. Here you can select different alts or change the order they will appear on field. Make sure to put higher CP first and the lowest in the end, as they will participate the least. On the right side we have the difficulty levels that on Korea goes up to 15 and requires a total of 97,000 CP of all 6 characters. But on global we won't have that high difficulty right away. My guess will be the 8th difficulty that requires 42,000 CP to be able to enter. Note that just like in Ruins, you can't enter higher difficulty if your CP is lower than the required. First difficulty needs 11.5 CP, that most of you can easily have already, unless you just started to play that game. That green number shows your gate HP, and it is calculated by family CP. So make sure to not only empower your Path of Glory alts, but other characters on your account too. Next we have the best part of it, the rewards. Note that even if you complete only first wave of any difficulty, you will still receive the rewards for the dungeon, just smaller amount, but not by much, so don't be scared if you can't pass all the waves. The first reward is a chance to get the Red Alchemy Stone or crystal that will further be used for awakening alchemy stone enhancement. Second is a chance to acquire the new item that will be equipped in the new slot and will share the stats between all characters. Family dungeon, family emblem. Third are the enhancement resources for that emblem, and you will always receive a flat amount of this. That will depend on the difficulty and waves completed. Next item is a limited event that is only available for Korea. At last, some rewards that you are familiar with already, great chunk of condensed dark energy chest, blackstone sacks and golden relics for silver. All of them have 100% drop rate and will drop flat amounts depending on the difficulty and waves completed. At last we have the start button and on Korea a multiplier button that won't be available on global yet. 
Or let's say, just like in Tower of Trials, you can complete this dungeon once a day, or with help of extra part of Glory Scrolls, that unfortunately won't be available through Merchant Tree, but will be given for events. Done with all preparation, you can start the dungeon. What to click? And before starting explaining what is happening on the screen, let's familiarize with the UI. On top left is situated the map of the whole dungeon. As you can see, we have two enemy portals on the left, where mobs spawn, and our green gate at the right. From the top portal, weaker enemies will spawn, in the form of little spiders that can be killed fairly easy, but must be killed either way. From the middle portal, each wave will spawn stronger enemies along with different types of bosses, depending on wave and difficulty. A good feature is animation camera restriction, that will disable different skills and both spawn animations. I suggest you disable them, so you can always keep an eye on the field and stay focused. Lower is the gaze HP bar and two buttons. First is camera view, fixed on a selected character or free view. And second brings us to the positioning UI. Here you have the ability to change all characters position or swap between them. Note that you can't change positions endlessly. It is limited by two changes every 30 seconds. So make sure to make wise decisions when swapping, as right position management is vital for success. Back to the main screen on top right is exit button. If you feel like it's a failure, need to make changes or just want to exit, you can freely exit without losing the free passage. Right below is the number of current wave and current reward. Every completed wave gives one extra chest that in the end boosts your reward. Number 4. Buffs. The buffs help your troops to complete the challenge. On top is your mana. You start with 9 mana that are filled by 6 every time you defeat one wave, or sometimes can be given as a bonus buff from a frost spirit. Below are situated 6 buffs. First, boost your troops attack power by 300 for 15 seconds as 3 mana cost and 20 seconds cooldown. Good buff if you have troubles in killing tanky mobs. Second is a big area slow, that slows all simple mobs by 90% for 6 seconds, has 3 mana cost and 30 seconds cooldown. Good buff against fast mobs. Third is the Meteor Shower Nuke, that damages in an average area killing all mobs and always taking up to 12 HP bars from any boss has 5 mana cost and 50 seconds cooldown. Fourth buff is a heal that kills all your characters on field by 30% of their max health instantly, has 5 mana cost and 5 seconds cooldown. Fifth one was added recently and it's a tricky one, but you will rarely use it at a high difficulties, as you will always run out of mana. It has 3 upgrade levels, first creates a lightning zone that constantly damages, I believe by 5% from max health the mobs and the boss. Second upgrade will create a zone of healing that will constantly heal characters in that area by 5% of their maximum health. Third upgrade will double both the precedent effects. Each upgrade costs 15 mana and has 30 seconds cooldown between uses. Last and the most powerful buff is the elephant charge that wipes the whole main road while traveling. Basically, it wipes the whole wave at once, but costs 20 mana and has a cooldown of 30 seconds. More about the right use of all the buffs will be reviewed in the next video. At last, finishing the UI review are the character's health bars. Always make sure to keep an eye on them, as if one of your character dies, it's almost impossible to finish the dungeon. Also note that if your mine character dies, dungeon instantly fails, so make sure to start the dungeon with the strongest character you have. How to win? Now, knowing all that, you will ask what about the process? Simple. All you have to do in order to pass to the next wave is to kill every mob in that wave. Or just kill the boss, since every boss mechanic is different, also the wave completion requirement is different. Every wave brings different mobs and different bosses. Mobs can be fast but weak, tanky but slow, and just average. Same for bosses, some will attack your troops, others will just rush straight to the gates. All that will be reviewed in the next video. The second portal will spawn little spiders that are fairly easy to kill. 
but you will have to send the troops around that entrance too, in order to not let them pass. Also at times a big spider will appear that if not killed fast enough will explode and can damage or even kill one or even three of your characters. 6. Special Mobs Now let's talk about special mobs. At times a frost spirit appears in random spot of the map. These spirits give different buffs, like healing, attack damage buff, meteor shower or extra mana. The meteor shower is quite handy, as it wipes the whole wave in one go. Another special is the boss Nuver, that will spawn in random location in the beginning of 5th and 10th wave, so you will have to deal with two bosses. Killing it doesn't give any extra buff, but he is very dangerous and can easily kill your troops. At last, sometimes on field, in random spots, may appear burning areas, that will constantly damage characters standing on these spots. Note that damage won't apply if a character during fight steps in it. After successfully finishing the best or maximum wave clear, you can collect your reward. Note that if you fail at some point, you can always choose between collecting the reward for the last wave or try again with different tactics. And these are all the basics that you need to know to get ready for that amazing and fun family dungeon, Path of Glory. If you like tower defense games, this add-on will be very juicy for you. In the next video I will do an in-depth guide for Path of Glory, explaining all the mechanics for each wave, how to correctly use buffs, how to equip and build your alts and even more. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. That was Smitty, have a nice day.